Hi, my name is Stacy. I'm from Stacy's Custom Cakes in Jacksonville, Florida. I am a home-based cottage food vendor and my specialization is custom cakes. It's in the name, it's kind of what I do. But what I do is I add a technical spin to everything I do. And that's the reason why I've partnered with Icing Images because I've been using printing and electronic cutting on almost every project I've done for close to five or six years now. So I love the products, I believe in the mission statement of the company. And what I wanna talk about is something that really annoys me, which is a marketing catchphrase, new and improved. And the reason why that irritates me is how can you improve something if it's new? But what Icing Images did this time is actually surprise me and come out with something that I would actually say is new and improved because of two facts. One, it's new because it's a brand new product that's never been on the market before. And two, it's an improvement of the old method. So if you were hanging out with us back in May, when I did my last tutorial on how to deep clean the print head in your edible printer, there was a syringe, there were tubes, there was cleaning, there was rinsing, there was squirting fluid all over the place. I made a proper mess out of myself whenever I did that demonstration, made for entertainment, but also makes for cleanup. With the new PowerMax cleaning system, there's no more syringe, there's no more tubes, there's no more fussing about with it. It's a much more streamlined, easier process that is way simpler to do. So the first thing we always do when getting ready is mise en place. Here's what you need. Inside the kit, there are several tools. You have a bottle of this new PowerMax cleaning solution. And if you have a bottle of the old solution around and you compare the two side by side, you will notice that the color is much darker on the PowerMax solution. And that's because it's a much more concentrated formula of the cleaning product. What else is really great about this is it's reusable. So if I forget to mention that later during the demonstration, remember that you can reuse this solution multiple times, saving you money. Also included in the kit, is a pair of tweezers, just like the old kit, to get the gaskets off your print head. There's a little cleaning pot here, and I'll tell you about the baggie here in just a second, but the cleaning pot is also for the gaskets. It comes with this icing images blue case for storing the print head while you're cleaning it. And it also comes with a little funnel so you can dump the cleaning solution out of this container back into the solution bottle so you can reuse it over and over and over again. So what else are you gonna need for this fiasco? You're gonna need my all time favorite tools in the kitchen, a dry towel, a damp towel, and then also some paper towels. And the paper towels are helpful for cleaning up any ink spills, for dabbing the bottom of the cartridges and things like that. That way you don't have to worry about staining a regular towel. So let's get started. So because this process takes a little bit of time and there's some rest in it, I've taken a video of me doing this whole procedure last Saturday. So Lori, if you go ahead and put that video up on screen, what you're gonna see here is my actual printer. This is the printer that was with me at the show at CookieCon Orlando. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is you're going to notice something very obvious whenever I open the lid here in just a second. And that's because um, if you've ever driven in Florida, you know driving can be a little creative here. And there were some bumps and quick stops. And because of that, some of the ink in my cartridges spilled out over themselves. So there's no damage done to the printer. Nothing was wrong with it. But I still wanted to go through the process of cleaning it just to make sure that there are no problems part of preventative maintenance. Plus it was a great opportunity to do this demonstration as well. So if we take a look here, my printer, video's not playing, there we go. So I open up the lid and it will bring the carriage over towards the center. So the first step you wanna do here is remove the cartridges. So what you're gonna see next is me bringing a tray with the black clips. Remember, always save your clips when you get a set of cartridges. And I'll pull each cartridge out. Now, 
on the black clips, you want to clip it onto the underside and then rotate it upwards until it snaps into place. So I take out the other clips. And then the next thing you do, which is going to seem counterintuitive, but you need to unplug the printer. Because if you look right here, there's a small retainer bar that prevents the print head retaining clip from moving. So you just push it over a little bit. And what we're looking at right now is the specific area that you want to be in. So the area highlighted in yellow is the piece that I just pushed ever so slightly to the right. And that is to get it out of the way of this piece of plastic right here that prevents this from popping up. Once we have this lifted up, that's going to release the print head. So whenever the print head is released, you want to be careful that you don't touch any of the gold pins because that could damage the printer. So here you can see that I lifted it up and with only one finger, you can see it takes no force whatsoever to pull that out. It just rotates forward towards you and then right out. So what I'm doing is just giving it a quick inspection, seeing how bad it is, see if there's any damage, any signs of damage, and then always set the print head down on its edge so none of the metal portions are touching. So the next thing we're going to do is start up the hot water. My tank takes a couple seconds to warm up. And then I open up the pot for the gaskets. And I've already used this kit once before, so there's some solution in there. And what I'm going to do is take out each one of the black gaskets. If you have small fingers, you can get them out that way, or you can use the tweezers inside the kit. And that's where the gaskets are located. They're around the sponge that's on the top of each one of the ports. So sometimes they can be a little stuck, just wiggle it back and forth. And I'm gonna run it real quickly under hot water just to get most of the ink off. And I do that for all five of the cartridge gaskets. Once the cartridge gaskets are in, I'm going to take the pot, put the lid back on it, and then give it a gentle shake. What you want to do is ensure that all of the solution is rinsing off the gaskets. And then next, we start the fun part. This is just like before. We're going to run it under hot water back and forth, letting the water flow through the print head. If you have a jet setting on your faucet, you do not want to, you don't want to use that setting. You just want a gentle stream of water. So you can see here after about two minutes, it looks pretty clean, right? But I found a little bit of ink that was dried up on the back. So I just used the edge of my tweezers to knock that loose and then go back to rinsing. Another minute later, it looks pretty clean. But now when I flip it over and start flushing it from the underside where those metallic strips are, and that's where the print jets are that actually put the ink on your paper, you can see ink has now come back out of those pads. And that's because what you're doing right now is you're using the water to expel all the ink from the plumbing inside the print head. So as you go back and forth, you want to do it from different angles. You'll see me rotating my hand back and forth different ways, trying to get the water into every nook and cranny of there to flush out all that ink. So once I do the underside, I go back, I do the top, I do the underside, I do the top. And if you're keeping an eye on the timing, it's been roughly 10 minutes. So it's about 10 minutes of flushing it with hot water. That's very similar to the old system. In the new system, that there's no need to change that. And the reason we're doing that is that gets about 99% of the ink out, which allows you to reuse the solution. That's the big magic trick right there. So now I'm going to take the entire contents of the bottle and pour it into the blue case. Now notice whenever the water, I'm sorry, the cleaning solution goes in, it comes up over the top of the pads and we want that. 
we want the pads and the bottom to be completely submerged in solution and let it do its work. Now, here comes the hard part. Close the case, and then you wait one hour, and then you rinse it with hot water, and then you air dry it for 15 minutes. And the reason why you're soaking it for that one hour is that allows the cleaning solution to work its way into the print head and flush out any residual ink that's left over. And also, if there's any clogs inside the print head, that will dissolve those print those clogs. And whenever you rinse it afterwards to get rid of all the solution, that will flush away those clogs for you. And then setting it on its side or on its edge, let it air dry for 15 minutes, 30 minutes if you have the time, and then you'll be able to start to reinstall it. Now, in the download on my website, stacyscustomcakes.com, and then click the link at the top that says Learn with Chef Stacy. On the article that I posted today, there's a download, and I have a handy chart in there that says, you know, here's my situation. Here's how long you want to let your print head soak. So one hour is standard. Two hours is a deep clean. 12 to 24 hours if you have a really stubborn clog that won't come out. And you can go up to 48 hours. And that's very helpful if you're in a situation where you haven't used your printer for a couple months and you need to get it back in working order because those clogs are very, very hard to break loose. So the great thing about the solution is you can go up to 48 hours and it'll work just fine. So now what you see in the video is I have everything lined up in the order it will go in the printer. So inside the printer, there's that strip right above where the print head goes and it shows where each of the five colors go. I have everything lined up in the same way. So I have my gaskets lined up where they need to go and I have my cartridges lined up in the order they need to be installed in. And that just makes it easier for me. So next you're gonna see me reinstall the gaskets. And you notice that the fat end of the gasket is towards the back of the print head and the flat side is facing up. So what I'm doing right now is just roughly getting it into place. I'll do that for all five. And then I will come back in a second and make sure that all of those gaskets are fully seated using the tweezers. So this part can be a little finicky. Uh, the tips of my fingers are kind of wide, so they don't really fit inside that opening. So that's why I use the tweezers for this. If you have a small straw, maybe like a boba tea straw, that would work really well for this as well. I, that's something I just thought of. And then you notice that on the large black cartridge right here, you can see how that's up higher than the rest. That means that it's not seated the full way and you wanna press that one down. So that's what I do next, is I wanna make sure that's pressed down the whole way. Then you notice that the printer is still unplugged. I did close the printer while I was doing this so nothing would get inside of it. And then I'm going to reverse the procedure. I'm gonna put the head in where it's facing me and then just rotate it slightly back and it just falls right back into place. And you see that it's flush with the rest of the carriage. And then I snap the cover back down to hold the print head in place. Then I'm gonna reinstall the cartridges. This is one step that I do that's a little bit different from how I did it before. I think now that just reinstalling the cartridges now saves you a couple steps in the future. So just like usual, take the clip off, gently rotate it backwards, and then pop it into place. And I'm checking to make sure they're all seated, close the printer, and plug it back in. Now, when you fire the printer back up, it's going to do what it normally does, and it's going to make some clunking sounds as it goes back and forth and checks itself. And you'll notice that in this case, it said that it wanted the front cover to be open. So I just lifted that up. And then it's gonna say, hey, did you know you lost power? Cause it, it saw it as a power outage. So this right now is the print head primer sheet that I created for icing images to use with their printers. And this just ensures that all of the cartridges are fully primed. And then like always, I recommend doing a weekly test print. 
immediately after that. And this is your check to make sure that everything is running the way that it should be.